Hello foodie friends, we're back again with the 1978 edition of 100 recipes from 100 of the greatest restaurants. This week we decided to pick La Bistro, which was a restaurant in Beverly Hills, California. It opened in 1963 and soon became a favorite of the Hollywood and political elite. It was also featured in the 1975 film Shampoo with Goldie Hawn. So, Let's get cooking and see how it tastes. All right, here is our recipe if you want to pause and follow along. All right, so I've got my egg and milk mixture all mixed. I'm going to cook it in this saucepan for about 10 minutes, the recipe said, until it's thickened and bubbly. Then we'll remove it off the heat and melt in our chocolate. All right, so I've got my chocolate mixture made. I've got the egg whites made. And what we're going to do now is transfer a little bit of the egg white into the chocolate to lighten it up. Then we'll fold the remaining into this bowl. And after that, we will put it into these ramekins, which Hopefully you can see, I went ahead and greased and then sprinkled it with, or actually coated it with granulated sugar. Here's an interesting tidbit while I mix the chocolate. I found out the other day that Benson & Hedges 100s is actually a cigarette company that was started in London in 1873 and is still being made today. During the 1970s and throughout the 1980s, they made cookbooks such as this one as part of a marketing campaign. Okay, so we finally got this done and okay no let, i'm gonna i'm gonna save how much i don't like this recipe <laughs> till after we taste you it. Try it first yeah let's try it first. try it first um i did put some whipped cream on it uh i just happened to have some uh heavy whipping cream left over from another recipe so i went ahead and made my own whipped cream but you know cool whip yeah. that'd be fine too ready <laughs> I think I think your judgment of the flavor I might be a little biased a little biased because I got so mad at this souffle but in all honesty I think it's actually my whipped cream that makes this taste as good as it may The whipped cream is good Yeah I don't really necessarily think that if we were just eating the souffle by itself, I'm not sure we would be like, oh, this is good. I don't know. I like it. I it's like not it. really sweet. I like it because it's not super sweet. It's like kind of a... Well, let me do one more just to see if I... It's kind of like a chocolate cake, but it seems like it had a lot more work in it than a chocolate cake would have, and not as sweet as a chocolate cake. It's... Okay, I'm I'm going to say it's good. Let's just talk about, though, <laughs> I'm gonna keep eating my all the trouble we had doing this recipe. Now, part of that was my fault, and some of the other parts might have been my fault too because for some reason I was really klutzy today so I was just like spilling milk everywhere I spilled some egg yolk it was just kind of a weird day for me so maybe part of it was just me but number one it wasn't the easiest recipe to do which sometimes is good because you kind of you know stretch your your skills a little bit and you learn something new um but I think Basically what I learned is just go ahead and buy chocolate souffle from a restaurant. <laughs> and like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know it that. It is a lot of work. But and part then... of my fault, I think, is the first time I made these, because I only have four ramekins, it makes eight. So I did one batch and then did the second batch. Um, the first time I filled up the ramekin too hot or too much. So the souffle kind of like went over and it didn't cook as well because I think it was just too full. So we kind of just scrapped those and then we started with this one. And I only filled them up about halfway and they did do better. Let's go ahead and just go into scoring the cookbook collector's TCT test. So let's save taste for last. So time, 
No. <laughs> J- I give it a one. I'm serious. How long did it take altogether? Let's see. It was in the oven for 30 minutes. Like all day? Still looking at probably close to an hour and a half. Oh, I think it was longer than that. Well, it took... I, a, I don't know you why. you screw took... up the first round, yeah. <laughs> it, it probably wouldn't take much longer than it's, that. I, I, if you knew what you were doing going in... Okay, but I'll, I'll caveat that with this. I'm giving it a one because I don't think the time actually was worth the, food. the product. I would say a two. But, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my one. So we'll do one and a half. One and a half, okay. Even. Let's do cost so before we get even. to the taste. Okay, well... So we... as far as cost... Eight um, eggs. you've got eight eggs, you've got milk, you've Two. got sugar, and you've got sweetened whipped cream. But you're looking at probably fifteen dollars, maybe. Yeah, I worth mean, of stuff. It wasn't a lot of stuff. I guess it's not like the worst, but when you're using, if you're getting a dozen eggs and you're using eight yeah. out of that dozen, That's like, how I much mean, is a dozen eggs now. Well, I mean, you can get them for like 99 cents in our area. So it's not like, yeah, it's not like horrible. But at the same time, I wonder if those eight eggs was worth the sacrifice of using (laughs) them for this. That's what I'm, I think that's what's kind of. Yeah, so you're looking at. Making my scoring a little low. I'm still kind of going back to, was this worth it? (laughs) Like all the ingredients and the time that it took. I'll give it a three on cost. Okay. Just to kind of be a little nice. So one and a half and a three. And what do you think about taste? Taste? Um, okay, the whipped cream is awesome. <laughs> but, I mean, homemade whipped cream is always awesome. Maybe it's just me. Maybe, you know, I like my desserts to be sweet. It's I not don't... really sweet. It's a, no. It's a little bland, actually. It is. But you can taste, like, you definitely taste the chocolate. There's not, you don't really notice egg. And it's unsweetened chocolate, by the way. Yeah. You, so it's, you taste it's... the chocolate more than any sugar. You really... I mean, I'll finish this, obviously, because, I mean, it's got whipped cream on it. But, (laughs) (laughs) but what, okay, I guess as far as taste, would I make this again? No. I don't think it was worth the time. No, I might, I'm I'm actually, okay, without the whipped cream, just basing it on the cake itself, I'm just going to give it a two on taste. This is just kind of like... Meh. But it's nowhere near I mean, worth the time I'm po- and... I'm sure as popular as this restaurant used to be, they had to have made this better <laughs> if it if it was yeah. pulling in people like the Kennedys and and uh, the Reagans and Elizabeth Taylor and all these people were coming in and eating at this restaurant thinking it's the wonders of all wonders. It had to be better than this. So something must have gotten lost in translation is what I'm thinking. But not my favorite. I would not make this again. Okay. So we have a one and a half, one and a, half a two, a three, oh, a three, and a two. And a two. This is bad. <laughs> the cookbook collector TCT test only gets a 2.6. That's sad. One six. 2.16? Yeah. Ooh. Even, over two even worse. <laughs> okay, so we have a 2.16. Something like that. For this particular <laughs> dish, yeah. As for Benson and Hedges 100s, it was interesting. I actually really enjoyed some of the other recipes that were in here. Yeah. Um, a lot of the restaurants sound really neat. Um, I wouldn't mind actually trying some of the other recipes yeah. in here. And remember, last week's was awesome. Yeah, that was really That good. was an awesome recipe. Yeah. So I'm not going to judge the book. This book. On yeah, because we had one great and we had one eh. What, what, what would you say about this cookbook overall? The book as a whole. I think is definitely a four or five. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I would, yeah. I'd go ahead and pick this up if you find it. it yeah. It's pretty interesting. I think so too. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to either finish this or just give it to him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know yet. <laughs> I know. But um, if you did follow this recipe and yours turned out better, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see if someone else uh, can make, can kind of salvage this a little bit. Um, But if you like this video, click like. And if you want to see more, uh, go ahead and subscribe. And we're going to have, let's see, we're coming up on the uh, month of March, right? Yeah. So we're going to be starting our St. Patrick's Month extravaganza. So it's going to be Irish recipes, but not the ones that you're thinking of. 
So no potatoes? Not so, it's, I don't know, there might be a potato <laughs> mix in there, but, but it's going to be traditional dishes that not really a whole lot of people know about. Okay. Yeah, Sounds so it'll good. be interesting. All right, so I guess that's it for this one. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.